Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a concrete sidewalk and a concrete entry pad. And I'm also going to show you how we pour it and how we finish it. So you'll get to learn how to do all those three things, forming, pouring, and finishing in this video. Hey, if, if, you, if you guys don't know me, my name is Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. That's my business. And I also own everythingaboutconcrete.com and this YouTube channel where I show and I teach you guys everything that, that I know and what we do for work every day. So if you like concrete, if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. So what we're doing is we're laying out the forms for this sidewalk coming out of this house. It's about a five foot wide sidewalk and we're flaring it out right up at there at the end to, to the width of the stairs. So what we're doing is we're just screwing the boards together now. These are just two by fours. This is a four inch thick sidewalk. And it has quite a bit of slope from the stairs down to where the driveway is going to be down here at this end. There's probably at least 12 inches of slope in this thing. So the first thing we do is, you know, we lay the forms out. We get them screwed together to length. And then we start pinning them where we where we need to. You can see me up there on the deck. I'm looking, I'm eyeing it from the from the door out to the where the driveway is going to be to make sure that it looks okay when you're walking out the door. I mean, that's what these people are going to have to look at every day. They're going to want to look at something that's fairly straight when they walk out the door and not kind of kicked off to one side or the other. So we're starting up on that one end by the stairs, getting that drilled and pinned into the dirt and then we'll screw the forms to grade and then we'll get our other end down here screwed together so we can run a string and and pin the middle part. So Darren's getting that end screwed together. I'm gonna go up there I'll probably eye that one more time. We gotta get our width just right. You know, forming, forming things when no one's there to lay it out for you, you just got to kind of do what you think is best, what looks good to you and what you think would look good to the homeowner. I mean, in the end, you want the homeowner happy. So, and if no one's around just to say, this is where I want it. And you just got to use your own judgment, make, make your call. So that's where it looks good to me. A lot of times, you know, when we're in a job, the excavator, whoever does the earthwork will lay things out and they'll have their wooden pins in where we need to put our forms. But sometimes, like this one right here, there's just no one there to do anything. So you just got to take it upon yourself. Make sure it's done right. Make sure it looks good. Because once that concrete's poured, there's no way of changing it unless you rip it out and do it again. This gravel was really packed hard too. Them pins went down in that dirt hard. So we're getting the forms all straight. You can see that white, that white stuff I got up there by the stairs. That's called ISO strip or strip off. It's just a piece of foam that we use when we don't want the concrete to bond to something or stick to it. So we don't want the concrete to bond to those stairs in case something moves, either the concrete moves because of freeze and thaw cycles or maybe the stairs move. This That ISO strip will keep them separated. So we're just following the slope of the of the gravel. It's, whoever graded it did a really good job grading it. So we're not putting a laser on this one the slope of the gravel to the driveway is what's going to be plenty. Like I said, it slopes about 12 inches from those stairs to the driveway, so there's no way water's going to ever sit on it. Now the girls are putting the wire to it. And that's how we form up that sidewalk, especially with a slope like that. Now, if we wanted the sidewalk, if it was more level, and we only wanted to pitch it a little bit one way, then we'd set up the laser, but we didn't have to on this one. So that wire is five feet wide and the sidewalk's five feet wide. And we don't want the wire touching the edges of the board. So we're going to cut about six inches of wire off 
So we got about three inches of clearance on each side of the board. That's what the girls are doing now. One of those girls, the girls cutting the wire is my daughter and the other one is Abby. Abby's her best friend. They're both in college. This is their summer job. So it's a good summer job for them. They do a good job too. So once we get this sidewalk done, we're going to go down around the other side of the house and we got a little entry pad. I'll show you guys how we're going to pour that in a minute here. We're going to show you how we pour the sidewalk now. We had to use a chute extension to reach so we didn't have to pull the concrete or wheelbarrow it. And we're pouring this pretty dry. This is probably because of the slope in the sidewalk. You know, it's probably around a four and a half inch slump, something like that. And what that means, that's a slump means how either dry or how wet the concrete is. And for like a regular concrete floor, we'll pour a six inch slump. That's pretty, pretty workable, it's pretty loose, but it's not too wet. It's not going to damage the concrete. So this slump is dr pretty dry because we don't want it to sag. So it's probably around a four to a four and a half inch slump. You can see Darren and Luke are up there starting with a straight edge from the, uh, by the stairs. We can just ride right on top of the forms on this one, so this one's pretty easy. You can see him straight edging that thing down while me and T is pulling the wire up. I'll get that chute out of there, and then we'll pour some more. Yeah, Abby and I are spreading it out. Darren and Luke are straight edging it. T is pulling up the wire. It's nice to have some extra help in the summer. Usually it's just me, Darren, and Luke, just three of us. You can see when Darren and Luke straight edge that, before they straight edge it, they mag float the edges smooth. It just helps. It helps and during the finishing process when you do that it fills in the voids around the boards really good it it brings up the cream around the edges it just makes for a better finish overall when you're done so we almost got enough concrete in the sidewalk gotta get a little bit more that was about that's about 35 feet long, if I remember. 35 by 5 sidewalk. So we got about two to two and a half yards of concrete in there. And then we got another small entryway we're going to go to in a minute here. I'll show you. We're going to end up putting a broom finish on that. This thing, we're going to cut grooves in it and edge it. So, I mean, stay tuned for that. That, that'll be coming up here real soon. I'm going to show you how we finish this thing. Pouring is just part of the process. Luke's bull floating it now, getting, getting all the cream up to the surface, pushing the rocks down a little bit. A good bull float person makes the finishing go a lot easier too. So you want to be able to bull float without leaving too many deep lines or too many divots when you tilt the bull float up or down. So here's a little entryway coming into that, that double set of doors. This is 6 foot by 10 foot. Again, we can screed right off the top of the forms here. We set the forms right to grade. This, is, this figure just under a yacht of concrete. 8 by 10 by 4 inches figures exactly a yard. So this is 6 by 10. We got fiber mesh reinforcement in this concrete too. And it's a it's a 4,000 PSI mix with air entrainment, about 5% air. Everything we pour outside exterior here in Maine has to have air in it 
because we go through so many freeze and thaw cycles. All right, we're going to get that straight edged off. And we'll get it bolt loaded. Then I'm going to show you how we finish this thing. So that's the pouring. T is going to put a bull float on that. She just learned how to bull float. Bull floating is really not too bad to learn. It's pretty easy. You can show somebody as long as they they listen and they do what you tell them to do. Bull floating is not too bad. Now what she's doing now is wait when she picks the bull float up, it leaves some lines there. So she's just magging those lines out. All right, so we're starting the finishing process. First thing we're doing is cutting in our edges. And now I'm cutting the grooves apart. So I'm putting one groove right where that thing flares out. And then I'm going to measure out about every six feet and put my other groove, five or six feet. So I'm just cutting them in by hand this way. We use a straight edge to do this. That's a, That groover is probably about an inch and a quarter deep. Now I'm laying out my other grooves, so I'm just measuring every, I think it was every five feet, and I put a little mark in the concrete with my finger, and then that's what I go by. So if you get on this just right to cut those grooves in, I mean, it doesn't take much pressure down to cut them in. You know, you just kind of, you can tap the concrete a little bit as you go to push the rocks down. And then you run that groover back and forth a little bit to, to make the groove look nice and smooth and creamy smooth. And then you just got to wait a little bit before you mag it and broom it. You can see how cutting those, cutting those grooves in isn't too bad. I'm just, I'm going by that mark I left with my finger and then I'm stepping back to make sure it looks nice and straight. And now what me and Luke are doing is we're magging the surface out. We want to get a nice, moist, creamy surface before we broom. Mag out any little imperfections. Sometimes when you bull float on a slope like this, you can't get all the rock holes filled in very good without making the concrete sag too much. So you, you got to be pretty careful bull floating. Which means when you go to mag... You just want to make sure you mag everything out when you broom it. so when you broom it it doesn't show any rock holes or anything like that. So Darren's running a broom, we're just using a two foot broom today. That's nice light broom, it leaves a nice light broom finish. What he's doing is every every time he pulls that broom or every other time he pulls it, he he goes and washes it out and gets the paste out of the bristles. If you don't get that paste out of the bristles, it leaves these little concrete rolls behind. It's, that just doesn't look good. So we like to leave nice, neat lines. So when the homeowner gets home and sees it, they, uh, you know, the first impression is everything. Luke's putting the finish pass back on that groover. We'll do the same with the edges. So we'll give it kind of like a picture frame look. So this is exactly how you do a concrete sidewalk. You form it like we did, you pour it, and then this is how you finish it. These are the basics of finishing concrete. So if you're just learning, I mean, this is, this is an important process for you to learn because you're going to broom finish a lot of concrete if, if you're going to do this as a business. Whether it's a pool deck, a sidewalk, a patio, you know, a driveway. There's a lot of broom finished concrete out there. I'm just touching up the edges with that, with that really fine hand broom. Darren's using his... Uh, margin trial there to touch up some edges on that last groove. We use those margin trials for everything. 
Now we're going to put the finish edger mark on it. We like those little brass edgers. They're about two and a half inches wide. And the curved part down by the board is about three eighths to a half inch down. It gives it a really nice looking tooled edge. There you guys, that's the finished look for a sidewalk. All right, now we're going to finish this little entryway. Again, Darren's cutting in the edges first, making sure they're all good and creamed up and no rock holes before we do the finishing. This was probably, a, he's cutting those edges in probably about 45 minutes after we got it poured. The sun was shining on this. I think it was about 60 to 65 degrees out. So if it was hotter, if it was 80 in the sun, you'd be cutting them in a lot faster. I'm going to cut one groove across there to help control any cracks. There, now we're going to do the final magging and the brooming and then put the finished tool marks on it. So again, guys, if you don't know me, my name's Mike Day. If you like concrete and all kinds of concrete finishes, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. If you want to learn how to do this stuff, how to set up the slabs like this, I've got a course down in the description you can check out where I teach you step by step how to do this kind of stuff. There's also, in that course, there's also uh, a, co a couple garage slabs I'm showing you how to set up and pour. And there's also a part where I show you how to run a power trowel in the course. So there's quite a bit to it. Go ahead down there and check it out if you want. Now I'm getting that finishing broom on there. We'll put the finished tool marks on it and we'll be all done with this one. Well, that's it guys. I appreciate you watching. Come come on back. Again, it's Mike Day with everythingaboutconcrete.com.